good morning students we are happy to invite you to the tnu family and we would like to congratulate each one of you for having chosen the psychology as your major subject in your post graduation we welcome you all now we are going to discuss about a subject called advanced social psychology the code number ms ps12 and you may wonder one more thing is there mcps12 that is for another program msc counseling and psychotherapy so there are certain common papers common courses in such a way this is also one among the common courses social psychology in this we are not going to see anything new we are going to see the aspects that which you are daily face in our life and we are enjoying our interaction with other people the major aspect in social psychology is how we relate ourselves to the world or environment around us social psychology is a scientific study of how people thoughts feelings beliefs intention or and goals are constructed within a social context by the actual or imagined interaction with others here we are seeing certain process in which we operate that is thought process first one thoughts how do we how our thoughts then feelings that feelings here refers the emotional components then belief the belief that is based upon our previous experiences past exposures how do we feel how do we conceptualize information believe then intention and goals intention list and goals refers to the motivational process and how they are constructed within a social context by the actual or imagined interaction with others that is not only the real time event actualize sometimes we will visualize what will happen and then we will behave in such a way this social psychology help us to know about the yourself as well as the result of your interaction with other people social psychology in terms in simpler terms it refers how an individual's behavior is affected by the group here the group is the people around you and how an individual in turn affects the behavior of the group so there will be this is a vice versa phenomenon and is how group affects individual behavior and the second aspect how group affects the individual so these are all the two way process so the here there are so many concepts process involved in this interaction to make it an ideal situation for an individual to lead an happy life the social psychology looks at your personality interpersonal relationship and group behavior these are the major aspects components or pillars of social psychology that is personality what is your makeup and then interpersonal relationship how well you interact what is your equation how well you can influence other people or other people can in- influence you and group behavior we do all behave in a unique way every individual is unique and the very same person will behave differently at a different times but again one more variation that is when we are alone our behavior will be different when we are in a group 
our behavior will be different again it depends upon the group to which you have belongs to now or to the group to in which you are sitting now say for example when you are a college student or a learning at a college when you go to cinema alone for a movie what will be your behavior a patient listener you will enjoy the movie music editing acting and all the aspects same thing it may be your favorite hero also or heroine same thing when you see the movie along with your classmates college mates how will you react this is a one example for how your behavior is changing in a group when you go as an individual your behavior will be different at the same time when you are attending the same movie or any event it will be different when you are among the group again whenever there is a change in the group your behavior also will change suppose say, for example you are at a, you are seeing the movie along with your family members how will you behave along with your classmates how will you behave along with your colleagues how will you behave so how this this is a way in which our group behavior is being studied and an attempt has been made in the social psychology okay this is a brief introduction about social psychology in the lesson material you got much of information about the orientation nature function and description about the social psychology next we will come to a important concept called a topic called cognitive dissonance what do you mean by cognitive dissonance cognition which refers to the higher order functioning or higher order process happening in every human being as well as an animal human animal beings also what do you mean by dissonance in physics we have studied about a concept called resonance and this is called dissonance what is it it is just opposite of your resonance that is a dissonance that means what some sort of conflict of interest is there so cognitive dissonance refers to situation involve conflicting attitudes beliefs or behavior here what do you mean by conflict conflict refers a term called trial of strength between two mutually exclusive forces between two mutually exclusive forces not the same forces some sometimes in opposite direction sometimes in the different direction so the it is a conflict between two people or two uh, two groups it's a conflict many a times we will have conflict within ourselves okay we call this as a intra conflict or intra individual conflict we have one such thing is a belief and behavior we may think one and we may do one okay this is a perfect example of a, a dispute in our conflict that is a conflict this produces a feeling of mental discomfort leading to a alteration in one of the attitudes beliefs or behaviors to reduce the discomfort and restore balance in the earlier schools stages of schooling we would have studied a concept in physics called elasticity what do you mean by elasticity that is it refers to the level to which an object or a body is stretchable likewise here the conflict will also this dissonance also will give a deviation or deform, deformation in our attitude or in our action in such a way after a particular point of time or a particular breaking point in elasticity we got a breaking point 
See, for example, if you are taking a rubber band and if you are elongate, it will come to a certain level afterwards, it will get cut off. Similarly, here, we don't have a cutoff after a particular point, but we may try to look for ways in which we can reduce that cognitive dissonance. This, this way, this that is, it is a natural phenomenon. The attempt that which you are going to make is a natural phenomenon in which you are going to reduce the conflicts and then in such a normal way you are coming to your balance. The major focus is restore the balance because if we have got some idea then we may attribute all the positives why you have chosen that way. If it goes wrong then you may attribute so many negatives to it that is why I have not chosen that path. This is a casual example for cognitive dissonance. Why it is happening? Forced compliance behavior. What is compliance behavior? You should like acceptance. You should you know, the, there is no deviation or having a different route. And next comes decision making. You have made some decision. You have taken some decision. It may not be correct or it may be. Then you are going to have a mental balance. It is a natural phenomenon which is operating in our mind to come to a neutral stage. Otherwise, this will be keep on continuing. Next one, effort. How much effort you put sometimes if you do not get the same reward, expected reward, you may have a cognitive dissonance. Then how will you come out of it? Changing the existing belief. That is, change the belief structure. Many a times we do not have, we are not correct in our beliefs. Our beliefs are formed because of our, that exposure as we have seen, then attitudes. This belief will lead to attitudes. At times this attitude in the later stage, it may form as a values. When it formed as a values, it will be more crystallized and it will be more permanent. Till then it will be changing. Then adding new beliefs, that is, when you are going to a change, that is, when you are giving some correct information or the, add the correct information, your cognitive dissonance will then, then reducing the importance of the belief. However it is correct or however it is painsome, then if you do not pay attention much to that thing, it will slowly lose its strength and then we are no longer affected by particular things. The wonderful example for this cognitive dissonance is Fessinger's, Leon Fessinger's theory. The theory is based on the idea that two cognition can, can be relevant or irrelevant to each other. Such cognitions can be about behaviors, perceptions, attitudes, emotions and beliefs. That is, any cognitions can be together. That is, if you are buying two articles. There is a acceptance will be there. Or sometimes there will be a dilemma or there will be a conflict. Why you have bought? Again, there are three things of conflict. Approach, approach, conflict. Approach, avoidance, conflict. And avoidance, avoidance, conflict. These type of attitudes will also come. Now, so Often, one of the cognition in question is about our behavior. If the cognitions are relevant, they can be in agreement or disagreement with one another. Here, agreement is consistent. That is, one which is having the consistent or it will be repeated regularly without any change. Then, disagreement, that is called inconsistency. These are the two major cognitions which are worthwhile to mention here. Then this cognitive dissonance in long run leads to the motivation to reduce the dissonance of the stronger the discrepancy between thoughts, the greater the motivation to reduce it. Okay. If there is a small discrepancy, then you, you may use a principle called discounting principle and then you may throw it out. If the conflict is high or the dissonance is high, then you will be more emphatic as well as, <coughs> as, well as 
has been very much enthusiastic to reduce that cognitive dissonance. The next one we call group think. The group think here refers to a psychological phenomenon in which people strive for consensus within the group. What do you mean by consensus? A common opinion or collective opinion within the group. In many people, but in many cases, people will set aside their own personal beliefs or adopt the opinion of the rest of the group. Why do we do? The first reason is to have a smooth sailing in the group. To have a smooth sailing in the group, so they may adopt this formula. That is, how will you come out of it? Okay. The second one, the group thing is more used as a negative connotation only. How we are making ourselves believe to the other one. In normal cases, normal parlance also, we will practice this in our life. That is, instead of taking out the role or the moral accountability, we may pass it on to it. So, we want, if we want to maintain anonymity and then move away. If you are very clear about not maintaining your anonymity, that is, you can project your fixedness, then these group things will slowly reduce. So, mostly this group thing is a negative psychological phenomenon in which we will set aside the real thing, though we know it is not correct, but for to comply with the group, we may accept this. That is why it is called group think. What are the characters of group things? Illusions of anonymity. They may feel nothing, nobody will question us. Illusion. Then comes collective rationalization. That collective rationalization is, we can say sometimes, when we are in the crowd, when everybody is shouting, we will also shout. Why? To avoid the what you can see, people will be identified as a different person. So, collective rationalization. Next, leader influences. If leaders are influencing for the sake of their leadership or the, for the sake of personal equation, we may accept. Next comes direct pressure. What is direct pressure? The direct pressure is then when you are working under a boss, then your chances, if he was not listening to you, your chances will slowly reduce to raise your voice or tell the correct thing, even though only a wrong path is being maintained or followed up. Unquestioned beliefs. We call this is no religious or rational validity for your belief. Stereotyping. Stereotyping refers to one particular group based on the, you may say based on the group membership you may have these type of characteristics this is called stereotyping low knowledge not much of a knowledge how to practice how to go about this that is a low knowledge illusions of invulnerability that is one is vulnerability second one is invulnerability we may feel many times we may not be accounted or we may not be identified so what will be we feel whatever we do is correct. Next comes stress. If you are extremely stressed, you will simply keep quiet. Let others do. I am just accepting whatever they do. That is also a basic characteristics of your group thing. Next, how will you reduce group thinking? The leaders can give group members the opportunity to express their own ideas or argue against ideas that have been already proposed. Then, breaking up members into smaller independent teams. Then the leader of the group should avoid stating their opinions or preferences when assigning tasks. Then assign at least one individual to take the role of the devil's advocate. Okay. <clears throat> Discuss the group's primary ideas with an outside member in order to get impartial opinion. Of course, there are some difficulties are there. 
first one identifying the impartial person and then you should also agree then finally when we are taking a decision the other member should be in support of it so sometimes you may be wrong that's why we say discuss the group idea concerned member in order to get new ideas you want to infuse some fresh blood better approach an outside member you can get the ideas encourage the group members to remain critical don't discourage dissent or challenges to the prevailing opinion before big decisions leaders should hold a second chance meeting where members have the opportunity to express any remaining doubts reward creativity and give group members right opportunity to share their opinions and thoughts okay many a times we may not recognize the this one so we should also give recognition now the next unit research methods what are the major research in applied social psychology once upon a time this was made as a separate subject then it was brought into a later stream and then we are going to study about that and so in such a way research methods are very much effective unlike the methods in the other areas of the lab or scientific basic sciences courses since it is belongs to social sciences or liberal arts we have to take care of certain important methods to present our views which may be accepted scientifically anything we can do so take some questionnaire collect some data and give it will not be accepted why it requires some formal in formal requirements that's it the major methods are archival study second one field study third one systematic observation fourth one correlation analysis fifth one experimental methods in this experimental method experimentation experimental bias ethical issues in experimental that's what we are going to see first one is archival study what do you mean by archival study we want to know what are the studies which have been done so far and being preserved in a certain area so that we can know what is a real status that is the major use of our archival study second one is a field study what do you mean by field study going to the field and then study people in the natural settings itself without this may be with their knowledge or without their knowledge because when we do certain things it may change their behavior we will study it in the later units as an actor observer effect that is a simple one is when we feel that somebody is observing us we may tend to be very ideal okay not real next comes systematic observation based manner the time and ratio has been already fixed and then this the subjects were assessed with the standardized tool on differential intervention and differential time okay next comes correlation analysis correlation analysis as i told you to find out the any relationship between two or more factors this is a correlation study sorry there is a name typographical error that's put on as correction analysis no correlation analysis next comes the experimental methods as we have seen this slowly we came out of the the philosophy angle and then we are pass on to the new angle that is with the aids of with the aid of scientific experimentation so in this we are doing some experiments and then we are trying to reduce the bias of this particular people in doing <coughs> the experiment we should avoid the experimental bias many a times experiments are conducted with a strong intention of a favorable result no even after conducting research for so much time then you are coming out with a certain things it may give you a booster to it so sometimes the experimental bias will also affect it. then ethical issues in experimentation there are different ethical issues have been identified so far and now there are the <clears throat> both the central government and the state government has given some ethical issue considerations or ethical point 
which has to be applied in all the institutions which are having some experiment on human being or animals also so that was a major issue in ethical consideration okay role of what is role of applied social psychologists evaluation planning and management training elaboration of indexes and indicators of aspect related to the interaction within a group in the evaluation training and management and then so the game we have to see the situation and then help them to plan and then run the show so the next one is intervention what is intervention given them some therapy to come out of their problem is called intervention <clears throat> next one design of social inclusion studies include as many number of samples as possible so that our results will come in a crisper way the more the variance more will be the secondary rate and then it goes on it's a continuous effort next comes group psychotherapy majority of people may wonder what is psychotherapy psychotherapy is a talking therapy in which you are going to have a counselor in that some extreme things will be discussed also next design of psychosocial assessment tools how to assess a tool only when you are going for the need only when you face the need you will go for designing something same thing is applicable for education psychology also so we will design the psychosocial assessment tools and detection of risk groups within a community okay who are all the groups which are being transported or troubled this particular thing what is the basic channels of communication next we are going to see the channels of communication what is communication communication is a meaningful exchange of information from one person to another person or a group of person through a media first one is the visible channel here some of the non verbal cues of the visible channel are expressed through distance gesture and eye contact so this one we call visible channel okay many of us would have faced or would have troubled the other people during this day next one is distance how much distance do you maintain study says if you maintain too much distance they say you are not interested in the person then gesture the sitting posture or the all the other things are called as sitting posture and last one eye contact we should maintain eye contact because that was the one among the prime respect we are going to give to our listeners we may feel that so many so and so is a, is forced to have some gratitude and they are morally debited to you but nowadays it is also not found not to be found phenomenon where the opposite side exists so to convey the respect to a particular person always you should maintain the eye contact next one facial expression this is a proverb saying you can forget you can conceal anything but not but the proverb okay so this facial expression we cannot easily conceal our expressions it requires lot of training the cinema and drama actors are the best examples for them whatever feelings they may have they will come and put and they will do the show they may they may act according to the mask that which we are wearing similarly facial expressions will <coughs> will easily identify your inner feelings then para language para language language and para language same meaning can be attributed here they may develop their own local language whereas only the people the representative of the people can understand that next comes the multiple channels where there will be a usage of multiple channels for a single process first one audio visual second one verbal only third one visual only and last one paralinguistics this is also one major issue where we are facing our this one okay 
this deception next aspect what do you mean by deception encouraging people to believe information that is not true knowingly you are making or influencing somebody to believe which is not true is called deception the lying is a most common form of deception that is stating something known to be untrue with the intent to be deceive okay you have few of the potential thing that may indicate that people are receptive in food being vague offering a few details repeating questions before answering them speaking in sentence fragments failing to provide specific details when a story is challenged all the grooming behavior such as playing with the air or pressing fingers to lips also part of it okay then body language shift eyes you are not concentrating on one particular way you are your eyelids are moving here there the pupil is moving here there then it gives an impression that you are not interested in the topic then another one that same thing is applicable to you then vocal cues this is many a times without our knowledge we will give cues to our listeners and then we may come to know most of the times it will be overlapping that is the language cues and instinctual cues are the major issues that may overact with this particular aspect okay next now when we earlier we have seen that somebody is deceiving how we identify it says something about phrenology and graphology what is phrenology and graphology people used to say that based on your head size and how you write with the right handwriting people will identify you whether you have done the crime or not next comes polygraph the, the word polygraph poly means multiple graph means measurement okay reading polygraph here means there are three or four instruments will be used at a time it is a component phenomenon where it will be used and you will get the recording usually this this will be used to, to detect the crimes particularly when the criminal was not giving any clues this will be used to broke out or make them to reveal out some basic information without their knowledge then brain based voice stress analysis how much you are talking and what is the stress you are making while you are speaking and then brain based light detection so we got some electroencephalography and functional magnetic resonance imaging fmri we commonly call will give you the best live based mapping which depicts the parts which are involved in it okay and then linguistic methods statement analysis and rating analysis non verbal analysis here the whatever the statements we give they may go through that statement and then they may finalize and they may give out so this hand rating analysis and non verbal analysis also form the part of your linguistic analysis we we may see sometimes we, when we are lying or when we are concealing something our hand rating won't be proper when again there are certain things called non verbal cues say for example raising your finger will give a different meaning and in the same area at the different context so we should also feel that these are all the major issues in the light direction next comes the attribution why do we attribute what for we attribute an attribution refers to our efforts to understand the causes behind others behavior and sometimes the causes behind our behavior too why it has happened this is a called attribution process the next one is it is a process through which we seek to identify the causes of others behavior and gain the knowledge about their stable traits and disposition as well as understand our own behavior clear so 
the attribution refers basically what causes certain behavior why it has happened for example if you are stealing something if you are so you are walking on the road you found out somebody is beating some person why they may give he has stolen something the next thing comes what he has stolen and why he had stolen that is called that we are making some causes we are see dear learners we are not going to approach and get the reply from the audience we ourselves make judgment what causes certain behavior it is sometimes within the person as observed uh, or it is caused by something outside the person we observe okay that is one is first one is personality what is happening within him that makes the do the other one is from the situation externality so we call this as a internal attribution and the other one is external attribution if is it is something within ourselves internal attribution something away from us or in the environment we call external attribution so next one is dispositional attribution where the ideas has been changed on this one next one situational attribution we attribute the cause for certain activity or efforts for certain activity depends upon the situation then next one is vinus model of achievement attribution an individual's causal attributions of achievement behaviors affect subsequent achievement behaviors or motivation and future achievement expectation persistence at similar task pride or shame felt following success or failure okay the basic three dimension for this attribution is stability stable and unstable the locus of causality internal and, and external the control uncontrollable and controllable so there are certain factors we call it as attribution factors which are they, they are the real reasons for this particular behavior the effort task difficulty luck factor ability depending where you have place with the attribution determine expectations of future performance shame pride all these things operate together